Welcome everyone to the weekly Firefly community call. Uh, just as a reminder, this is a public call and it is being recorded. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that. Uh, today for our agenda for the first part of our call, uh, Hayden Foos will be presenting on uh, deploying Firefly and lots of cool DevOps related things there. Um, so thank you Hayden for uh, the slides that you put together. And then uh, as always, the second half of our call will be uh, just open discussion on uh, whatever topics folks want to talk about. So uh, with no further ado, I will hand it over to Hayden. Thank you, Nico. Uh, yeah, so as Nico said, uh, I'm Hayden Foos. I'm a site reliability engineer here at Kaleido. Uh, and so I've been working on deploying Firefly in various clouds uh, at recently. And so I'm here to share some of what we've learned and more to show off what we have so far. Um, so really excited. Uh, let me, uh, I think. There we go. Sorry about that. So. Um, today, what I'm going to be showing you or discussing first is just the challenges of deploying Firefly because it's a multi-party system and kind of the inherent uh, challenges that come from that. I'll cover that first, and then I'll introduce uh, some cloud native technologies that help make the deployment process of Firefly a bit smoother in terms of how we can create a consistent experience for various folks who want to deploy Firefly. And then, um, and then I will get into a demo of actually deploying it onto Kubernetes, uh, which will be most of, most of the session. So. Without further ado, um, so what does deploying Firefly involve? Uh, if you recall from previous uh, architecture discussions and other community calls, Firefly consists of a core uh, that is the actual engine and sort of orchestrator of the system, but then it has lots of infrastructure uh, runtime components that it requires. So there's the blockchain interface, private messaging, which is uh, fronted by a data exchange connector, uh, and then you also have public storage that's required as well as a database. Um, and so with all the, with, you know, deploying Firefly itself is relatively straightforward, but it's the infrastructure around it that can actually be the more uh, challenging part. And so just to reiterate, uh, when you're deploying Firefly, you, you need a database, you need a blockchain node, uh, which is fronted by a connector. You need peer-to-peer -peer storage and you need a data exchange. And so when you're using the Firefly CLI, which I highly encourage uh, if you're you know, wanting to develop against Firefly, go check it out, it's, it's great. Um, it, it does this all for you using Docker Compose. Um, but what about in cloud environments is, is kind of where I want to take this obviously. And then zooming out a little bit and thinking about Firefly in more um, production scenarios with lots of members in a multi-party system, um, the fire, everyone in every member in the network would need their own Firefly node. And additionally, it'll need to have that surrounding infrastructure that I just described. And so, uh, and, and what's really important to highlight then is that components such as blockchain, the storage layer, and the data exchange are all peer to peer and are requiring network connectivity between all the parties. And that's a very difficult problem to solve in a multi party system normally. So, uh, this is just framing. It for and then sorry the last uh, the last challenge we kind of face as part of this as well is um, each of these members could potentially be running in different cloud environments whether it's private cloud on prem uh, AWS Azure Google Cloud etc and so um, it's difficult to then provide a or it can be difficult to provide a consistent deployment experience for Firefly as a result of that and so. Um, that is kind of bleeding, leading right into uh, this idea of cloud native and how, uh, as we're developing Firefly actively, we're, we're um, also keeping it in mind to immediately have it be cloud native or as cloud native as we can and iterate from there. Um, and what I mean when I say that, I got a good quote from the Red Hat folks on this one, is when an app is cloud native, it's, it's kind of what we highlighted in the last challenge is it's designed to be provide a consistent development and automated management experience across these various clouds. And so while um, there might be folks who could argue that there are other uh, container orchestrators out there, the industry solution that seems to become uh, emerging or has pretty much emerged as the standard to solve this problem and cr help create a consistent uh, experience for cloud native apps is Kubernetes. Um, and so just in case you're not familiar, I'll give an overview of Kubernetes in 60 seconds or 60 seconds ish. And then we'll get into the actual demo and some of, and you know, kind of show off what we've been able to do in terms of making sure Firefly is a cloud native app so far. Um, so 
Kubernetes in 60 seconds. Uh, it's an open source platform for managing containerized workloads at scale. Uh, the idea is that you're deploying Docker containers across various VMs and you're needing to uh, you know, have a layer that's orchestrating all that and managing the network in between all those Docker containers. And so just kind of like how Firefly is aimed at um, abstracting away various pieces of um, a multi-party system like the blockchain and a few others, uh, Kubernetes is aimed at abstracting away the underlying cloud infrastructure. So you want to have the networking in between all these VMs, as well as the load balancing in front of them abstracted away, as well as the persistent storage. And, and it's, you know, emerged as an industry standard for kind of doing exactly that. And it, it's achieved it through these sort of pluggable interfaces known as controllers. Um, and these controllers are continually reconciling any resource you give to a Kubernetes cluster and ensuring that the state that you've asked for is actually what's getting made. And so that's how um, it ensures containers are in the right state, the storage that they might require is in the right state, the load balancers, et cetera. Um, and so lastly, to give you kind of an idea of what the interface when you interact with Kubernetes is like, and if you're not familiar, um, it's a declarative configuration uh, and it's aimed and it provides, like I said, that the continual reconciliation is what eliminates the need for orchestration because it's doing it for you. So on the right, what you're looking at is an example of defining a Kubernetes job. All it's going to do is spin up a Docker container uh, using a particular Docker image and it'll just, um, you know, print hello Kubernetes and then sleep for a few seconds before wrapping up. And so Kubernetes would take this job see that the container gets deployed to a VM out in the cloud and ensure that the uh, container either completes or if it goes into a failure mode, it would you know gracefully back off on retrying until it gives up basically. So that was Kubernetes in 60 seconds-ish. <laughs> I hope that was helpful if you're not familiar. Um, I think it'll be you know obviously more helpful to see some real examples at this point. So what we're gonna show for the demo today is we're going to deploy a two member net Firefly network onto a local Kubernetes cluster that I have on my laptop. Uh, and this, uh, what will actually get deployed to the Kubernetes cluster is Firefly, the Firefly uh, data exchange that's using HTTPS with MTLS uh, and, a, and Postgres. Um, we're gonna use a package manager for Kubernetes called Helm to do so. Um, and this is with a, what's called a Helm chart that's uh, in the process of getting into the, um, Firefly repo, uh, you know, this week as we're talking. So, and then um, I, ETH Connect and IPFS, uh, the blockchain and storage layer are going to be remote and they're going to be provided by Clyde SS just because it's a little bit easier. And like I was saying, since they're peer to peer, um, there can be challenges with, with running that locally a little bit easily. So um, that's an overview of the demo and I'll get into that now. Uh, So wanted to first start, uh, sorry, just fighting Zoom real quick. I'll figure it. Um, yeah, so, so like I said, uh, the, the first thing is if you were using the Firefly CLI, um, and I'm just using my uh, Docker UI to kind of show all the containers that would get spun up in a two-party network as part of the Firefly CLI. Uh, you know, it's a very similar idea. And so we're going to be doing the exact same thing, basically, but using Kubernetes. And then, uh, you know, some pieces of it will actually be remote. And so what I have running on my laptop is a, uh, is a tool called Kind. It's, uh, aimed, it's Kubernetes and Docker is what it stands for. And it's aimed at um, making it very easy to run clusters locally. So an entire Kubernetes cluster is actually running in just this one container right here. And so if I do Kind get clusters, you'll see I have one made called the kind cluster and that's what I'm actually logged into right now. And so what I've gotten it done in advance is um, the cluster's already up and it's got a, a controller that will help uh, manage automate uh, certificate management, which is needed for the MTLS layer and the data for data exchange. Um, and otherwise it's just the vanilla installation of kind that comes right out of the box. So Hayden, just to clarify, yeah. you're, you're demoing how to run Firefly not on your laptop by showing it running on your laptop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm track. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The whole idea is by, because of the packaging that we're using for Kubernetes, this Helm chart that I'll show off. Um, yeah. We'll, we'll be able to move it from the cloud on my laptop to the cloud. Exactly. Anywhere you're just, else. Yeah. Just running the cloud on your machine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Makes, Makes sense. sense. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. No, no, no. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, 
so so yeah, like I said, I got the Kubernetes cluster up. Uh, we're good there. What I wanted to show off is kind of what I meant by a Helm chart and a little bit of that. So just like that uh, example Kubernetes job I was showing you, um, since it's all declarative configuration for Kubernetes, what ends up kind of being in order to write a cloud native app for it, you end up writing a lot of YAML. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so what then becomes a challenge is distributing the YAML, templating the YAML so that it's configurable across various environments across various clouds, which might have a few you know, smaller details that need to be um, changed between them and things like that. And so uh, Helm is kind of like the RPM or NPM of Kubernetes. It's a package manager for Kubernetes. It, it sort of provides the structure of how you format your YAML and how you package it up as a tar and then distribute it out so that others can reuse it. And so we're in the process of writing a Helm chart so that it can be um, shared via Helm repo and folks could pull that down and reuse that to deploy Firefly and the data exchange kind of a la carte and configure it however they need for whether it's a Postgres they have running uh, already in their own data center, um, whether they're using blockchain nodes provided by Clido in the SaaS or their own blockchain nodes, uh, you know, you name it, we want it to be as configurable as possible and, and, you know, you own it as much as you can. So, and that's what this ultimately facilitates without getting into the weeds of uh, all, all the, the YAML and code that has been written to make that happen. Um, that is at a high level what, what it's ultimately doing. And so uh, it's a lot like a Docker Compose file. If you look at the Docker Compose that gets made by the Firefly CLI, um, but it's just, you know, cloud native is, is the whole point. So. That was a quick overview of the Helm chart itself that I'm about to show off. Uh, and then, yeah, and, and so without uh, further ado, we'll get into actually deploying it. So right now, if I ask the cluster that I'm running in for the pods, if, or if it has any pods, there are currently none. And I'm going to, uh, what, what I have, what you do when you deploy a Helm chart is you basically provide what are called values to it, you know, YAML config that are, that is being used to template the rest of it. So. I have two values files, one for one member called Acme, another for another member called Randalls. And uh, they both have enough config defined for them to be able to connect or to spin up their own data exchange, to spin up their own Firefly node. And then they're connecting out to a remote ETH Connect and IPFS that's uh, being hosted in Clido that I'll show off uh, once, once the Fireflies are up themselves. Uh, we have this demo dev chart written that could actually run IPFS and ETH Connect locally or in Kubernetes for you as well. But um, like I said, network connectivity and a few other pieces running blockchain itself, it's easier to sometimes just use uh, something remote. Uh, so um, yeah, so what I will first do is create what's called a Helm installation. I'm going to deploy the chart and create an instant instance of it, which is called a release. And so the first release is going to use uh, the values file for the Acme member that will stand up a Firefly node for Acme. And then we're going to create another release for the Randall's uh, member, and we'll see some Firefly uh, containers get spun up too. So, so this is uh, the interface into Helm. It's just a Go CLI, uh, just like Kubernetes and and Firefly CLI as well. Um, <laughs> And so what we're doing is an installation of it. We're using the, the chart I was just showing off, the Firefly dev chart. We're providing the Acme values for that particular org. And we're creating a release called Acme Firefly that will spin everything up. So Helm is noticing that a release app doesn't exist. It's creating that. And now if I do kubectl get pods and I watch, uh, what we're going to see is uh, a few containers kind of spinning, uh, getting going. So Firefly is currently uh, crashing uh, only just because both Postgres and Firefly DX are still coming up. Um, Firefly DX is getting its MTLS certificate through a Certificate Manager, which is a feature of the chart that we've written. Um, and it's a controller that kind of helps automate uh, a certificate authority within Kubernetes for you. And so once both um, now that Firefly DX and Postgres are up, we're going to see Firefly come up shortly. And then we have a job container that is going to auto register the Firefly member into the network. Um, so that uh, if another member joins, it can, it can discover this Firefly node. So this should get going, this should finish up shortly. 
And as I said, just to kind of show off what's at the, the blockchain layer, um, in the Kaleido SaaS, I've already beforehand stood up both IPFS for Acme and Randalls, as well as a uh, Go Ethereum node for Acme and Randalls. And then using um, the smart contract management uh, feature of, Fire, of, of Kaleido, I've deployed the Firefly payment and Firefly uh, smart contracts uh, into those blockchain nodes. So the, all that's preloaded in advance um, and would be you know, something to work towards and actually having be maybe automated as part of some of the Helm charts or things like that going forward. So um, the auto registration is complete for Acme. Um, so we're gonna now install Randalls uh, and then we will show off kind of the actual network that's been made and running um, and we'll send a transaction over it and that'll wrap up demo for today. So just like the, uh, oh, and I think it's worthwhile just to show off Helm um, and you can list releases and installations. So I've um, you know, done a Helm LS and you can see this Acme Firefly release has been made. Um, and that is what ultimately created all these uh, Kubernetes resources that we just saw get spun up. So what I'm gonna do next is um, install Randall. And we'll do the same thing again, just watch for it to come up. Um, or actually, I think we've already we've seen that before, that's not as useful. What we can go ahead and do in the meantime is um, while Randall's is getting up, we'll, we'll start port forwarding uh, the Acme Firefly node so that we can connect to its explorer and I can show that off in the meantime. So um, Kubernetes allows you to connect to containers if you need to using what's called port forward. There's also other ways of actually exposing them for real external traffic, uh, but we won't get into that right now. Um, but so I'm just port forwarding Acme locally uh, or the Acme Firefly node that I stood up, its API to my local uh, port 5000. And that will also enable me to then go to its explorer. So if we go to the explorer, we've seen that there's one member in the network currently. Um, and if we go into the Firefly system um, namespace within Firefly, we can see that some messages have been exchanged for uh, registration, registering the node. Um, but otherwise, there's still um, not another member yet. And if we list pods in the cube namespace again, sorry, uh, we'll be able to see that. Yeah, Randall's is now up and it's still registering. And once it's done registering, we should see that two, oh, uh, we can now see two members are there. And um, while there's no messages in the default namespace, if we go into the Firefly system, there's now been some additional messages and transactions to, to register the second member as well. Um, so now that the other member is up, we can see that the auto registration has completed. Um, what I'm going to do next is then port forward Randall's, and then I will show using one of our Firefly sample apps, uh, doing a broadcast over the two member network. Um, we'll kind of explore that in the Firefly UI. I'll actually take the transaction hash and show uh, that in the actual blockchain layer that's hosted in Kaleido, um, and that will at that point conclude the demo. So, uh, Yep, so the next step is to port forward Randall's, and this one will listen on my local host 5001. And so now if I go back to my browser, and refresh this page, I'm also now, I'm now connected to the Randall's Firefly Explorer and can see the same thing uh, on its side in terms of members. And we haven't exchanged anything in the actual default namespace yet. And so that's the next step. Um, so in, in my other terminal, while I have some port forwards going, I'm using, uh, we have a Firefly samples repo in the, in the Hyperledger community. Uh, there's two applications. Uh, one is an actual UI uh, React app. The other is a CLI. And so today I'm just going to use the CLI to quickly send a broadcast from one of the members to the other. Uh, so the CLI um, by default assumes that you have two Fireflies running on 5000 and 5001, 
and it's going to send a broadcast from 5000 to 5001. So we should see a broadcast from Acme to Randall's uh, using the COI. So if I just do an NPM start, we'll get, we'll see that we're broadcasting data values hello and world via Firefly 1, which is the Acme node. Um, and we're seeing on the port forward from Kubernetes, you know, some uh, requests and connections are being made, uh, which is kind of nice in response. And then we actually see that we received the data on the other end from the other Firefly member. And then what was printed here was a record of the actual transaction that was made on the blockchain as a result of that. So if I take this transaction hash and um, go into Kaleida's data explorer, uh, or transactions for the blockchain nodes that I've stood up, I can actually then search for that transaction um, and we can look into it. And so you can even see from there, um, sorry, let me, or actually no, it was listed right there. Uh, this was from uh, the Acme, one of the Acme node wallets and it went to then the Firefly contract uh, as a result. And so, um, you know, again, none of this data, the actual hello world was ever put on the blockchain itself, only hashes and uh, of the transactions, or yeah, only hashes of the data was actually what was put on the chain. So, and you can see um, what method was called within the Firefly contract that facilitated that. And and um, yeah, you can see the, the hash data as well. And so, you know, that was a, and we could even reverse it if we wanted to, um, where we send it back and forth or send it from one member to the other. But oh, I think the last thing to show would just be to show that the, um, that popped up in both data explorers. So, uh, you know, we're in the default namespace on the Acme uh, Firefly node. Uh, we see the broadcast that had been sent um, and we can see the same thing on the Randall's node as well um, in, in the messages. So. That was getting Firefly working uh, on Kubernetes locally. And so, like I said, to, to wrap up here uh, and emphasize what this home chart would then allow is, you know, um, if you have your own Kubernetes cluster, whether it's running in EKS or uh, on-prem, and you have, a, you know, some of the infrastructure may be already pre-provisioned that would need it to be around it, you could take this chart, provide some config to it, and then deploy it out and get your own Firefly network running as well. Um, and so, yeah, I think uh, I think that about does it. I really appreciate uh, folks um, giving yeah giving me the time. I hope you enjoyed it. Awesome, thank you, Hayden. Uh, appreciate the the work you put into making the chart. That's that's great.